much for uh, taking the time to sit with us. Um, first thing I want to ask you guys, what's your take on you know the ongoing protests uh, that the Rapaimi people are uh, posting against the GBPC? Well, um, from our point of view, we support uh, the protests in the sense that we think that there's no jurisdiction for the Grand Bahama Port Authority to adjudicate upon this for a couple of reasons. First, the question of the law. Um, thirdly, there's a court case which is seeking to adjudicate the matter right now. And uh, thirdly, um, there appears to us to be a conflict of interest on the face of it. Uh, so those are issues which have to be prosecuted. And then, of course, there's the issue of whether or not there should, in fact, be an increase. There was just an increase within the last three years. And on the face of it, it looks to us as if an increase is not justified. So the matter should be properly adjudicated or arbitrated by IRCA. That's the body that's responsible in law for it, and that's our position. So one of the main reasons I'm here is as my, on my party hat to make sure that PLP supporters know that we are supporting the people of Grand Bahama in what we think is a justifiable dissent on the question of the race. And uh, we had a good turnout uh, this morning. Well, that being said, obviously you guys are standing with uh, Grand Bahamian people. But what do you think needs? What do you think the next step should be between Grand Bahamians and the GBPC? Well, I think there are a couple of things that are uh, can be in play. One is uh, the question of whether or not uh, some actor in the whole drama uh, should not move by way of an injunction to stop them from considering it altogether. I think that would be one way of approaching it. Uh, but the other way is to continue to make the case publicly that this is improper, that there's no jurisdiction to do it, and that raising is simply wrong at this point, point, uh, point in time. Uh, this city has had, and this island, uh, have had significant blows in the last uh, decade, uh, largely Dorian, we know, and recovering from that. And then you had the decline of the economy, and uh, it just simply doesn't make sense. You're really just sort of trying to get blood out of stone. That's the way it looks to us. Yeah. Um, we know it's been an ongoing battle between you know, the government and the GBPA. Uh, what update could you give us uh, on that? Well, that process is ongoing. Um, the principle, of course, is that uh, there is, as far as we can tell, um, a provision in the Hawksville Creek Agreement which says that they are to reimburse the government for services provided uh, by the government to the city. Uh, it is our view that they have not uh, fulfilled that obligation, and the question is how is it settled? And that's what's ongoing. Um, I think that the public at large needs to consider quite apart from this instant issue the whole question of whether or not a Grand Bahama Port Authority ought to be operating as a separate sovereign within the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Uh, I think back in 1969, uh, when the Hawksville Creek Agreement was then in full force, uh, you know that um, they used to have supernumerary policemen and they used to have immigration powers. All of those were repatriated to the government in 1969. So the whole point by the Port Authority was conceded then that there's only one sovereign in the country. That's the government of the Bahamas. Uh, it is incredible to me the impertinence with which these people have approached this matter, which their progenitors would never have done, because the way to deal with these matters is by agreement. But they appear to be thumbing their noses up, trying to poke you in the eye. And in my view, in a contest between the government of the Bahamas and the Grand Bahama Port Authority, only the Grand Bahama Port Authority can lose, uh, because ultimately the parliament has the sanction uh, to withdraw what it has given. And the question is only a remedy and damages. Now, we don't want to get to any of that. Uh, so it's important for this matter to be settled, but there's a process, and so I leave it there for the time being.
um, I guess back to the KBPC uh, saga. Um, how well, how is that? Um, well, what's going to be the relationship between the government and the KBPC? I guess once you know they understand that this rate is in kind of fear at this moment. It seems to me that no matter what happens, this is going to get bogged down in litigation. If 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 the um, if the rate is approved, someone is going to challenge it and say, "Look, it's not lawful to do so." I think that's where it's headed. So, uh, as a company, I think they're ill-advised in even pursuing it. I think they ought to abandon it and say that's it, and seek to make savings elsewhere. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that this is going to go away. And if this company is unable to make a profit, since they're a profit-making company, then there's always a solution for that. I mean, you either change your management, fresh investment, or perhaps get somebody else who can make a profit uh, in the circumstances. And where do you think, you know, Urka basically stands in the midst of all that? Um, well, at the moment, uh, there's no application before Urka. But what we're trying to tell them, the company, publicly, is that an application needs to be properly placed there. That's what the law is. So dealing with uh, the Grand Mall Port Authority um, is really an exercise in futility because they have no authority to, to deal with this particular aspect of the problem. And I was explaining to Prime Minister yesterday that uh, you've had, over the last month, rolling blackouts in Grand Bahama. Now, this is what I thought. This company was supposed to be super efficient. They were supposed to have invested in new plant. They laid off people. The place is supposed to be so super well run. Why are we having blackouts in Grand Bahama? And at the same time, you're asking for a rate increase. So they have a lot to answer, and the PR is not good. Uh, when they had the last uh, rate challenge, they had the whole religious community in the island against them. And uh, it's only about a time before I'm sure the ministers of religion get involved in this because it, it affects their members. So that's my, my, my feeling is that it's better for them to abandon this and, and choose another way. And last, I guess, what would be your hope uh, coming out of all this? The hope is uh, that there's going to be some turnaround, not just on this matter, but on Grand Bahama's economy generally. Um, this is a great investment for anybody. Um, people who come from Nassau should invest in this city, um, particularly while prices are at a relatively low rate compared to what's happening in Nassau. Here's what's happening around our whole country. I've just done Bimini. I've just come from Inagua. I know the experience in Exuma and what is happening in places like Harbor Island and Eleuthera. So our model is to attract foreign investment. And that foreign investment buys Bahamian land. They're supposedly to bring an investment of $750,000 before they can get permanent residence. And if you're larger, like uh, Bahama and these big investments. So what that has done is $750,000 seems like a lot of money to people, and to most people it is. But to these people who are coming here, it's chump change. It's nothing. And they get to stay in a place where the weather is perfect almost 360 days out of the year, uh, right next to the U.S. market, 30 minutes away, have all the modern amenities available to them, can really lounge on the beach and sip lemonades all day if they want, bring family and friends here. There's uh, something called HGTV. Uh, every day I look at that, people are selling Bahamian real estate and homes, and people are boasting about what a great place this is. And what we get out of it, most people say, is the people who own the land get the money from the sale of the land. The real estate agents, they make money. And, uh, and then we get some employment, maybe housekeepers, maybe gardeners. But increasingly, those people are coming in from outside as well. So is that enough? And then if something goes wrong, you have a heck of a problem trying to dislodge them from here and they have influence in their home countries far beyond 
the Haitians who most people are complaining about. Uh, so that's the situation which you, your generation, has to think about, is what's the future of this place, Grand Bahama? In 30 years, whether we succeed in this process of uh, the issue of paying the money back to us or not, in 30 years, this reverts to the people of the Bahamas, all the regulatory powers and all the rest of it. So we ought to be thinking now, what are we going to do when that happens? The Chinese, when the lease expired, the 99-year lease expired on Hong Kong, they said, we want it back. You know, uh, sorry, it's ours, we want it back. And they've got it back. Our view is, it's ours, we want it back. Uh, the quicker the better. The model is not appropriate for 2024. Uh, no one was consulted on it in 1955, but things are different now. So it's uh, even though those of us uh, who were here, born in 55, are now the managers of the system, the real question is, you know, what is the generation to which you belong? Uh, think about where this is all headed. Uh, and uh, I hope it's headed into the repatriation of the sovereignty in its entirety, and that Bahamians will have invested in this city, and that will bring fresh life and capital here, and that the city will have a long-term future. That's our view. Right. Thank you.